After work story Tuesday afternoon style. Yes, tired from walking home. Whoa, my feet. I have just been on my feet all day, but this is relaxing for me. And today's book is Just Like Grandma. Yeah, I have some hardworking grandmothers. Susie May and Gazelle. Yes, and of course my mother was hardworking. But let's read about this grandma. Let's see. By Kim Rogers, illustrated by Julie... Flat. Mm. I hope it's light enough in here. I guess I can't hardly move. Let's see. Ah, ooh. Brown. Just like Grandma again. Oh. Is it light enough? Oh. On the steps of a house at the end of the street, Becca watches. <laughs> what a beautiful house. Neat. Just the two of them. Just the two of us. Hey. There's pretty flowers. Yeah, these are the moments where we create memories. So, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And we could get into this. Like I said, under steps of a house at the end of the street, Becca watches Grandma bead and bead buckskin moccasins. More than anything, Becca wants to be just like Grandma. Let me try, Becca says. Grandma hands her thick thread and a thin needle. Together, they bead until the sun dips below the tree line and Grandpa calls them in for corn soup. Oh, this is my type of story. First of all, vegetables. Second of all, out in nature. And they're sitting on a porch. Oh, this is, this is, this is wonderful already. Look at this. Oh, do I need to put on some more light? Let me see. Just look at the scene. I don't think that's gonna help, but. Out the window of a house, at the end of the street, Becca watches. Grandma danced barefoot near the garden. Yes. Spinning round and round and round like the most beautiful butterfly Becca has ever seen. More than anything, Becca wants to be just like Grandma. Who do you want to just be like? Or want to be just like? Something to think about. Maybe it's a combination of more than one person. Well, she flitters out the back door and stands near the garden barefoot to let me try, she says. Grandma shows Becca some dance moves in the cool grass. Together they flutter like the most beautiful butterflies Grandpa has ever seen until the sun dips below the tree line and he calls them in for fried chicken. Oh, Grandpa is just a wonderful husband, isn't he here? And look how jazzy Grandma looks. She looks beautiful. Oh, what a picture of a wonderful looking family. Inside Grandma's studio. Oh, come on now. Becca watches Grandma paint and paint a colorful sunrise. Grandma is living her only life and her best life. This is what I'm talking about. More than anything, Becca wants to be just like Grandma. I'm telling you. She has a great family. She has a husband who cooks corn soup and fried chicken. She dances in the grass. She has a wonderful granddaughter. She paints, she has her studio. What? I think I'm gonna be like this grandma too now. Oh, Becca sits down next to grandma and her pretty palette. Let me try, she says. Grandma shows her brush strokes on the textured canvas. Together they paint the most spectacular sunrise anyone has ever painted until the sun dips below the tree line and Grandpa calls them in for pancakes for dinner. Grandpa, are you real here? Is, is, is there a man who cooks corn soup, fried chicken, and pancakes? What? 
and he allows his wife to just be her best and enjoy herself. That's called self-actualization. What? Oh, this is wonderful. At the weekend powwow, Becca watches Grandma dance fancy shawl with many other dancers who are half her age. She wins the grand prize more than anything. We want to be just like Grandma. It says Becca wants to be like Grandma, but I, I'm saying we, we can put the plural now. We. Half her age, these people, but she dances the best. She's probably the most limber, the most energetic, and wins the grand prize. Come on, Grandma. When it's time for an intertribal, Becca says, let me try. Together, she and Grandma dance until the sun dips below the powwow arbor, and Grandpa calls them over for beans and fry bread. Grandpa, look, do you have any nephews? <laughs> or, no, I'm just kidding, sons? Because he sounds like a wonderful man. Let's look. Inside a house at the end of the street, Grandma looks out the window and watches Becca all alone with her ball. Grandma sprints outside and next to Becca, look how athletic she is. Let me try, she says, and Becca shows her the play she's been practicing for basketball tryouts. Oh, she's growing up. Mm. More than anything, Grandma wants to be now just like Becca. Together, they shoot hoops until the sun dips below the tree line, and Grandpa calls them in for turkey and white bread or twinky and white bread kick and white bread never heard of that but we know it's delicious because grandpa cooks prepares food all the time and isn't this beautiful this is called reverse mentorship first grandma was mentoring little becca now becca is showing some moves to her grandma that's how it should be we learn from each other at the school gym grandma and Grandpa wait and wait in the hallway during Becca's trials so they don't make her nervous. Becca dribbles and she shoots, she scores. She makes the team. Cool, very supportive family. Together they high five until the sun dips behind the gym and Grandpa takes them out for pepperoni pizza. Grandpa, they all laugh and eat and celebrate Becca's win. Isn't this precious love? It's actually just the three of us now. On the steps of a house at the end of the street, Becca knows that she is just like Grandma. Beating, dancing, painting, winning. Mm -hmm. You're a winner too in so many areas. Look at this. Playing, eating, celebrating, spending time with her and Grandpa, too, together. Just the three of us. Hey. And Grandma knows that she is just like Becca. Beautiful. Let's see, a letter from Cynthia Lee Tick Smith. Dear reader, do you have a role model? Yes. Someone who inspires you to be more like them? Maybe your role model is a parent or teacher, an auntie or uncle, a neighbor or a grandparent or other elder. Role models show us what's possible for ourselves. Like Becca's grandma showed her it was possible to bead and dance and paint. Or maybe you are a role model to a sibling, cousin, or friend. You might even be a role model to a grown up. Yes, like Becca is inspiring grandma to play basketball. I had feedback from a first grader today. And she gave me an idea. And I was like, ah, oh, first grade. And I said, you know what? I can learn from a first grader. Yes, I can. And I received it. So I won't say she's my role model, but I listened to her. Elders can be loving, influential people in our lives. They are often caretakers showing us how to nourish each other like grandpa does for this family. Whether you have elders in your day-to-day -day life 
or only through books like this one. I hope they inspire you in wonderful ways. This picture book is published by Heart Drum, a native-focused imprint of HarperCollins Children Books that publishes stories about young Native heroes by Indigenous authors and illustrators. I'm delighted to include this book on the list because of the nurturing bond between Becca and her grandparents. And because when I was your age, my grandmother's one stylish and strong-willed, the other homespun and good-humored were among my life's greatest blessings. Mmm, Cynthia Lee Tick Smith. Think of the influences of your life, the most powerful influences. Of course, I would say my parents. What about yours? Authors know. Although this story is fiction, my grandmothers have always been a big part of my life. They are no longer with us, but I have fond memories of each of them. My great-grandmother, who was full of energy and went out dancing into her late 70s, my granny, who loved books just as much as I did, and my Wichita grandma, who I remember watching canned vegetables and jams. I love playing in her garden just like Becca's grandpa. My dad has always been the main cook for our family. Wonderful, taking good care of us. He still makes the best fried chicken in all the land. How wonderful. Yes, in traditional Native American families, grandparents and elders have always played a significant role in raising and educating children. Oh, we need to get back to that. I'm saying across the board. They pass down cultural knowledge and kinship ties to ensure that they are continued for the next and future generations. Families like Becca's are becoming more common. The number of children living in a grandparent's home has increased significantly over the past decade. Yeah, I can think of some parents or in some parents who are now grandparents and they're the main parents in the family, in the household. Beadwork is one of the best known art forms created by Native Americans for thousands of years before the invasion of Europeans. Native people created their own beads using materials such as bone, shell, stone, and wood. They often use sand as an abrasive to shape the beads. For centuries, the people of Native nations throughout this continent traded beads with one another. They later traded with European, Mexicans, Canadians, and U.S. citizens. Glass and ceramic beads were one of the earliest goods Europeans traded with Native Americans. Today, beadwork has become a way to symbolize and celebrate Native American heritage. At powwows, you will see extensive beadwork sewn onto the regalia of dancers. Regalia are not called costumes. Many Native May natives proudly wear beadwork daily on earrings, bracelets, watches, hats, and other items. The art of beadwork is usually passed down from elders in the family. So you got your corn soup as a glossary, fancy shawl, dance, fry bread, intertribal dance, a powwow dance, palette, we know, that's the color scheme, paint, regalia, outfits for da uh, dancers. And do kits, a Wichita word meaning meat dish. It contains beef such as stew meat that is fried in grease. Hmm, very nice. Well, let's look at the author and the illustrator. Beautiful women. Kim Rogers writes books, short stories, and poems across all children age groups. Age group. She is an enrolled member of Wichita and affiliated tribes and is a member of the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition. Much of her writing highlights her Wichita heritage. Kim lives with her family and her tribe's ancestral homelands. And Julie Flett is a swampy Cree and Red River author and artist. Her picture book, Bird Song is a Boston Globe Horn Book Honor Book. She also received her Governor General Award for When We Were Alone. All right, Julie lives in Vancouver, British Columbia. Wonderful. Well, this was a nice book. On the steps of the house at the end of the street, Becca watches Grandma bead and bead of buckskin moccasins more than anything. Becca wants to be just like grandma. Well, you might, I can't think of someone who you want to be with, but make sure you're living your life so other people will want to be like you. Yeah. 
Don't be like Charles Barkley. I'm not a role model. Yes, you are a role model because people are watching you. Have a great day modeling and being a great example.